Welcome to another drawing session. It's a beautiful day here in Northport and the birds are at the feeders. We have a number of feeders out and um, uh, we've got a, quite a collection of spring birds showing up and a lot of winter birds who have kind of changed their shapes and attitudes for springtime. Everybody's busy flying about. I love drawing birds. Uh, it's rare to be able to catch them sitting still. Uh, usually drawing in flight, I draw very fast and try to get any kind of an indication of them. But when they slow down and, and I can look at them closely, there are a few basic forms that I know I can turn to that will get me pretty close to what I want to have in my finished drawing. Um, basically, circles and ovals. Today I'm going to draw a blue jay. It's a beautiful bird, very colorful. It has stunning markings, striking blacks and blues and grays, and just a, a, an amazing bird. And it's a big bird, too, as, as feeder birds go. So I'm going to start out with a, a simple line here. I'm going to draw this line. This helps me get my position on the, t on the paper of where I want this bird to go, and it gives me an idea of the size. This is called an axis line. Uh, this, uh, this line tells me that this bird is going to be perched at an angle, it is roughly like this. I'm going to build the oval shape of the body around it. It's a powerful bird. It has an oval like this that comes back and, and around. I'm drawing the oval lightly because it's not truly an oval, but it kind of fits that shape. I'm leaving enough room back here for the tail and also enough room up here for the head. So it's pretty much in the center, a little the, the heavier part of the oval, the broader part for the breast of the bird and the shoulder is up here towards the right and it's tapering down a little bit towards the tail. I'm going to draw the triangle shape of the tail coming down this way. I'm just going to come down roughly like that. And beneath the oval here, I've got a little triangle shape, which is the rump of the tail pushing out like that. So I have an oval shape. I have a triangle shape here, kind of. And then up at the top, I have the head. Now I'm going to have a different axis line for the head. The body is angled in this direction. The head will be angled more in this direction. So I'm going to use a shape which is kind of a circle, but actually it's, um, it's more of an oval, and it's going to be placed right about here. And I'm drawing this lightly. It's not going to be the actual shape of the bird. You'll see as we go. I'm going to use this part right here for the nape of the neck. This is a, a line that curves over joining the uh, joining the back of the bird's neck to the back of the wing here. And uh, it's going to come down like that. Notice I'm drawing a little darker now as I'm starting to define it. One of the characteristics identifying a bluebird is this, is this crest that comes up in this direction and comes back and over like that. And I'm going to draw this bird's head coming around, following the top of that oval, and I want him to be looking down in this direction, or over in this direction. It has a powerful forehead here, and a beak that comes over here like this. Now, with this circle shape, or this oval shape I'm using, you can actually draw an axis line on this too, that comes through the center of the beak, and by drawing this line, it makes it easier to position the eye. Some birds have eyes that are further back, like a robin looks pretty much sideways from here. And if, if it was a raptor we were drawing, we'd have the eyes way close forward so they could see their prey. Uh, in this case, we have a, a, a blue jay, which has an eye right about here. And often it's placed higher or lower than the center of the axis line. So I'm just going to position it right here for now. I'm drawing the circle, and as I'm doing it, I'm thinking of the uh, the ring, the eye ring that goes around it. So I, I might darken this in a little bit and get that position, and then lighten this ring around it like that, just to get it get it where I want it to go. The um, the beak flares out and back here from the from the forward end, and then it comes out. And we're going to make this beak um, kind of come straight out about that far and then back from here. It has a rather long beak and a rather, rather loud noise it makes too. It's a kind of a squawky bird when it gets, gets busy. But I'm going to draw this line here coming up and so we have this line. Now, things that I've, things that I've drawn that I'm not, not uh, going to use in the drawing, I'll be erasing later. But at this point I'm drawing lightly. I notice I'm using the side of the pencil as I'm drawing and and it, uh, it means that I'm, I'm putting lines down with a 6B pencil here that are a little darker, but they're very easy to erase. Uh, it also makes it show up better for the, uh, for the camera. 
underneath the head of the bird here, instead of a convex line like this one here, we have a concave line that curves in like this, and then it comes down and it merges in with the breast. Now I'm going to enlarge the breast of the bird a little bit. It's got a powerful breast area in here, and then it comes back and it tucks in a little bit in this area. And then I'm going to actually bring it right out here where it joins with the plumage feathers of the thigh of the bird coming down in this direction. Right up in this area here, I think I'll just work on the basic structure of the bird first. We have a line coming around here like this, and uh, that shows the nape of the neck. And I'm going to start shading some of this in now, just to ease into a, a darker area coming around here on the back of the neck. The plumage itself is quite dark, so I'm going to shade this in. Now notice by doing this, I'm covering up a lot of lines that I won't have to erase afterwards. They'll just be built right into the drawing. So I'm going to make a, a line that comes down in this area and joins up to the front of the bird's eye. So we have a sight mark here, S-I-G-H-T, what we, what we see. And um, we have another sight we'll be dealing with in our drawing, which is the location, the site or location where the birds live. And uh, we'll be able to indicate that with the background, the, the perch that it's standing upon. And, and then back in here, starting right here, we have a dark ring that comes down like this. And it comes up under the neck of the bird in there. And a line that comes in from here right up to the eye in there. So in the process of these lines, I'm just blocking in this bird and I'm going to be moving things around and changing it a bit as I go. Uh, here we have what are called the coverts, the shoulder feathers of the bird that are going to come around in here. And um, we have this darker area here. This is a lighter gray, kind of a blue-gray color in this area. To make the bird look more real and more believable, I'm going to darken this in now. And you'll see that as soon as we do this, you give it a little spark of life. Uh, drawing the dark circle of the eye and leaving a speck of light, a reflection, right in there like that, and then adding a curve underneath to darken in the eye ring and define this beak a little bit more with that eye color, and then this sight mark, darkening that in a bit. The beak itself is more black, but I want to have a shimmer of light on it to indicate the light of the sky. And then tuck this under here a little bit more so we have basically the shape of the bird's head. The secondary feathers, the smaller feathers, are going to come back in here and the flight feathers are going to actually overlap. I'm going to draw these feathers coming out from in here and back in this direction. All of these feathers have a beautiful array of markings on them. I'm going to come up here with some marks like that, and then I'm going to define these feathers with lines that come back in that direction, and then put the colored banding on them, the black bands along the back of the wing in this area and this area that define them, and some darker feathers in here. These feathers are long and long and graceful and they are merging right into this area where the tail feathers come down. You have the other wing sometimes crisscrossed here, sometimes just laying over to the other side, but uh, in this case I'll crisscross over the tail feathers. These tail feathers are coming down and they're going to have an array of feathers they radiate out from the center one. The center feather is the top feather, and these others fan out beneath it, so it has some good downward pressure on it for flight. And underneath here, you have the downy feathers of the body. I'm going to carry the thigh of this bird up here like this, and up in here. 
We aren't going to see the, uh, the overlapping thigh on the other side. Uh, in fact, we won't even see the thigh. I'm going to draw a line that comes out from the body right here and bring it this way. And then right here, I'll bring out the leg of that's closest to us. Maybe have a little bit of feathering up in there. So this one is tucked into the other side or by the other side of the bird and is reaching out to grab onto this, uh, this perch. The perch itself is going to be a piece of wood. It could be a branch or something like that. And the claws on this bird are really quite large. We think of birds with tiny little, tiny little feet, and, but they actually are quite large and they're designed especially to hold on to the objects that they're depending upon for their stability, for their getaway, for their perch, and so they can really grab onto things. I'm going to make this an old, an old stump sticking up like this. It's just going to come up, maybe break it off at the end, and just give it some contour for it to grab onto. To make this look more interesting, I'm going to add some lines up through here and through here. There's a banding on the tail feathers. The techniques I'm using are kind of quick sketch techniques that you might use if you're in the field or if you're in a museum sometime and you don't have time. You can go to the, you don't have time to do a, a detailed drawing, but you have enough time to uh, sit in front of some of the stuffed birds in the displays and and you can, uh, you can get a likeness of it and catch a posture that you want to spend more time on in, in your studio later or when you have more time. And uh, here's part of the site. We're going to take this stick and I'm just going to make it look like it's kind of old and weathered. And, and I have a little darker area here coming up and, and add some texture to it like this. And then what I'm going to do is come back over here and deal with all of these areas a little bit more by darkening in some. Like here, I want that line to be, the crest to be darker. I want especially for this line here to be darker. So I can come in and kind of build that on, leaving some of the existing texture and bringing this around in here. I want to bring the chest out more full in here. So just simply adding a line to balance that out helps. And I want this beak to... I want the feathering under the beak to come up and merge with it here. Again, a little more darkness there and more darkness towards the center here as it arches back. There's a little darkness in the front there as well. So this is a time to add adjustments to it, to bulk out the body where it needs to be bulked or adjusted and to uh, thin it out a little bit, which I'll do in a moment with an eraser, but I want to get the basic structure of this bird. So it's a powerful bird, it's a noisy bird, and um, stunningly beautiful bird when you see it in nature. Uh, just to get some idea of what kind of a tree this is, to add a little background to it, and I think we'll put it maybe close to the edge of a, edge of a field. This is a forest bird, but it loves open spaces to fly, and it's, it's also a very uh, a bird that is very well adapted to human beings. Uh, they, they do love the feeders. So I'm putting some extra branches on here, mostly to kind of fill in this area, um, but also to add some more details to it. You can draw some holes like this in that wood, and maybe on the finest branches you could draw a few needles, maybe from a jack pine or something sticking out here and there. Maybe this is the the last season for this tree and you got a few stray needles coming out or maybe it's all worn and weathered and that's when you start thinking of colors, uh, the colors of the bird we've talked about, but the uh, colors of the branches and maybe the surrounding background are things to, uh, to consider. Uh, I'm going to put a shadow, a darker shadow under this wing now and I'm going to allow that wing to project out. Now the full, the um, the, the plumage of the bird beneath this tail is lighter than the tail itself, so I'm going to darken the, the tail in a bit more 
and just kind of round this over underneath a little darken that in a bit but basically darken the tail feathers in so it tucks under the uh, flight feathers here primary feathers are kind of bunched together and I'll put another line through there to show that they're narrow and lean and, and maybe come back in here and touch that up a little bit. So we have a, a bird that looks somewhat realistic. And when I'm done with it, I have a, a, a kneaded eraser that I can use. And um, you can see it's kind of a spongy or a, a stretchy eraser. And as you stretch it, it self-cleans. This works great on soft pencils like the 6B pencil I'm working with. It works fine with a uh, with standard uh, HB pencil or, or your number two pencil as well. But see, I can come in, I can tidy up some of these areas, get rid of some of the extraneous lines that I don't really want. And I can also reshape things. If there's something that uh, I got carried away with and I want to thin it down a little bit, lean it down, I can do that. Also, there are some lines within the body here that I don't really need so much of showing there, like that one there and this in here. But a lot of those these lines um, actually help suggest the form and the roundness of the bird. Right here I have the lines cutting through the thigh of the bird, which, uh, which wouldn't be showing through the leg, so I can do that and uh, just darken that, push that back a little bit. And uh, with this eraser also you can make a fine point of it and uh, cut into some of these little detailed areas and uh, touch them up. If I want to have more light back in there and less, less, uh, less detail or less shadow I can do that. Same thing with along in this area here on the wings if I want those to stand out more. You can go back and forth with the with the eraser and the pencil and adjust things as you like them. And when you get it where you want it, uh, you can use a spray fixative on it to preserve it. And you can get those at, at uh, Hobby Lobby or, or uh, Michael's or any hobby shop. Amazon is an easy place to find most anything nowadays as well. So I just touch this up. and So I end up with a picture that I'm pretty pleased with. Uh, and I could keep working on this for hours to come, cutting back in with more details, but I think I'll leave it at this. And thank you for joining, with, joining me. Um, I'll be doing a lot of bird drawings coming up and also nature drawings, um, starting into a whole series of nature journaling and field sketching drawings uh, that just show ways of catching the beautiful nature. We, and, and, the, and this time of the year especially, with the, so many things just bursting into life from a long, dismal winter and, uh, and uh, just flourishing, especially flowers and the birds returning and all. So I uh, hope you come back and draw another one of these creatures with me. Thank you very much for joining me and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.